catch you live, everybody. Do you have a phone? Can you take this photo, Ralph? Or we'll do the intro. Fat, why you got all that on you? I'm a storyteller. <laughs> These are the tools of the trade. All right, well, got the mask on. <laughs> About as good as I expected my first short entry to go. All righty. Well, hey there. It's your buoy, Pat. Franz and Anemones, welcome to this experiment in overcomplicating something that's normally super fun. I'm an underwater photographer out here in Monterey Bay, and uh, right now we're swimming out to go do a little dive. And I've got a camera here, I've got a camera here, and hopefully, if I can keep all of this stuff in order, we're gonna go out and just share a little bit of about what it's like to dive out here in the Monterey Bay. This is my backyard. I've been living here for the last, oh, 14 years, coming up on 15 years here. When I was five years old, I saw the sea otters over at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and I wanted to be a marine biologist and work there. Here we are, some 28 years later, I'm out here doing this nonsense. So I've been scuba diving since about 2009, and I did my scientific diving at UC Santa Cruz. And the scientific diving is pretty much what changed my life. It taught me well, all the cool stuff that we can do out there in the ocean. And I've really wanted to be able to share what it is like to go scuba diving out here. And uh, this is an absolute pain in the right now, I'm not gonna lie. And my buddies are photographers, which means that they're already gone. And they're not here to help me. Maybe I need an intern or something. Well, we have a sea otter back over there. Then over here, we've got Phil, Ocean Phil. Follow him on the gram. Over here, we got Sage, Sage Ano on the gram. Gonna go on a little scuba dive. All right. All right, down we go. Let's see how this mask is fitting. And, uh, yeah, what it looks like on our way down here. Sweet. So, got a little bit of camera adjustment to do. I just have so much new sh on. In any case, the metridium field pipe that we're currently diving is one of the best little dive sites that we have out here in Monterey Bay. If you want to get out to some of the more open ocean life. Oh, and we have a nice little, let me just flip this around. It's got a beautiful little sand star right there. Love it. This is wild. I've been wanting to do something like this for years. I'm not too sure if I'm nailing it, but we're gonna keep believing. I have like four different cameras with me right now. Right, so I have my primary Panasonic GH5 camera, which is the one that you're currently seeing. Right now we're going past some giant kelp that's growing all along this pipe. We're relatively shallow at the moment, about 23 feet deep. Dropped pretty early because with this whole full face mask set up and everything, there's just a very good chance that I'm not going to have enough air to do the full dive that I want to do. Looks like we got a little bit of a salp right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see the salp. Oh, it's kind of showing up in the video. Uh, not really. So, oh, we have a sea lion coming right by us there. They've been pretty rambunctious little friends here of late. Part of the reason that we're heading out is that we heard from earlier divers that there are potentially ocean sunfish, mola mola, out there. And you may have seen 
some of those molas all over my dive gear. If I make those stickers, check out the link in the video right now if you want to order some stickers. So we have another salp right here. Let me just adjust the focus on my hand. Sweet little salp right there. Pretty broken up. But so there's potential for sunfish out there, which is very exciting. And there's also potential for a thresher shark out there. Some folks were seeing thresher sharks. Now, the fact that we had that sea lion coming by, that's not good because the sea lions eat both of those. So we saw actually a big group of seagulls on the surface that are out where we're headed. If you love those sea lions, it's a zero-sum game with my love of mola molas and seeing pressure sharks on a dive. So just consider other people when you love charismatic megafauna. You know, it's uh, some of us out there suffer. So right now we've arrived at a pretty sweet little thing, which is, hey, hey, we found some melody out here. Check this out, everybody. Oh boy, that's so exciting, I gotta pee myself. The miracle of pee valves, and maybe that'll be another video. I feel like I'm introducing a few too many concepts here. Part of the reason for coming out here for me was to take some photos of these awesome melaby. These are a sea slug, a nudibranch. They have naked gills. And uh, the way you can describe a melaby is that they're like an angelic stegosaurus with a Venus flytrap for a face. So this one down here is fairly big. Let's see if I can put my hand out there kind of see the size of the animals that we're looking at. And so these little paddles on the back of them are their serrata. Those are digestive in function as well as uh, for breathing. They increase the surface area of the slug's breathing ability. And then you have the big old hood on them. If I just pull the kelp towards us a little bit, you can see maybe that they have this hood here on the front, and that hood allows them as juveniles, like this one down here, to scrape the kelp for food, or in the larger ones, to grab some food out of the current. So these are an incredible sea slug, and uh, they often are on kelp like this, and this is a patch that we kind of knew was around here, hence why we all came out here to dive together. And fun little fact about these sea slugs is that they, uh, they uh, smell like watermelon Jolly Rancher. And that's a real fact. Uh, we're not exactly sure why they smell like that. But part of the reason could be that it helps them find each other. They're very gregarious slugs and they like to find each other to mate. And that's what these little things are right here. Those are all of their little eggs with those little egg clusters on there. All right, uh, well, I'm gonna turn on my strobes here, start taking some photos of these, and uh, then we'll mosey on to the medium fields. like how this is going. Right now I'm just trying to rotate the kelp a little bit so I can get some foreground and background on them. I have a very slow shutter speed of about one, almost a second. Um, but I have my aperture at uh, F22 to provide a very shallow depth of field because everything else is going to be 
it's pretty blurry as I move around. I kind of like that motion blur with things that are not really moving around too much. Oh, and there's our little sea lion friend over there. Let's see what's going on with this little friend here. I like how the kelp is angled on it. That could be a pretty thing to try a slightly different lighting technique on, but all right, now we'll keep trying that. Let's see. This one's opening up its mouth nice and wide, so maybe that'll, that'll get some interesting angle in there. Oh, I kind of like that way that that looks. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll look good. Let's get a little bit more light on it right now. Very cool to have this patch of deliciously scented sea slugs right here for all to enjoy along the Matridium field pipe. It's pretty hard when they're not, uh, when they're not opening their mouth to really kind of make sense of what they're doing, so I appreciate this one for doing the deed. Thank you for your service, you slug. Oh yeah, that should look pretty good a little bit later in post. Check and see where we're at with there. Oh yeah, I don't think we're gonna be going too, too far today. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna make it to the Retridium today, folks, but that's okay. I'll make sure to take you out there at some time. Oh, looks like we've reached the end of the pipe after all. How much air do we have? Oh, no, we might be able to actually go out there and take a look. We've got Sage taking our photo. Yeah, I think we can go out to the Matridium Fields and we'll just come right back. So there's the end of the pipe right there. Oh, look at me. I'm just dragging all this kelp behind me like a freaking noob. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, in any case, we're at the end of the pipe. And so now we're gonna head out and see if we can see the Matridiums real quick before turning around and coming back. Hey bud, how's it going? Doing good? Hey, little sea lion friend there. We have a copper rockfish here in front of us leading the way over to the Matridium field. Right here in front of us, is a big old reef that is covered in white plumos anemones. These anemones can be over three feet long, so they're pretty substantial. I'm feeling a little bit of a current pushing us out this way. Got one of these coming up from the camera. To reveal the Matridium Field Reef. That's kind of fun. Let's see. Maybe we can get up close and personal with some of these Matridium. Kind of show off the camera's abilities here. Oh, what's up, buddy? That's a copper rockfish coming to say hello to us. Sebastian's Calvinas. Yeah, that's right. It's a new GoPro Hero 11, dude. You should check it out. I think there's at least something in there for the folks at Vax Hero to use. I've got so many rockfish looking at me. What's up, dude? You can hear me talking. Is that what it is? You guys never come over to talk to us like this. Hey, well, I'll have a conversation. Catch on the podcast. So funny. These rockfish have no idea what to make of me. They're making so much noise. <laughs> that is not a great photo of that. We've got a dead ocean sunfish. Bits and pieces right there. I was saying how you can have sea lions and you can have sunfish, but not at the same time. Oh, there's the other piece of the sunfish over there. 
So I'm used to navigating to and from the Metridium field pipe by dead reckoning, and I saw those bits of sunfish earlier, so I know how to make my way back. But normally you'd be using your compass to do this, and your compass heading from the end of the pipe is about a north heading to be able to make your way out to the field. There's the pipe again. And then it's, uh, about, you know, south back to the pipe, but basically, if you want to hit this pipe right here, you uh, kind of want to aim 210 degrees, give or take, from where we were. This building is actually pretty good right now, and you know, it's not crystal clear, but this is a good day for Monterey Bay. Now we're going to head back in. Got about a thousand PSI right now. We are about 43 feet deep. It's a very good learning experience for me. Normally, this dive in my wetsuit, I could probably spend Oh, easily an hour, because I'm talking, I'm using a lot more air. This is going to be a learning curve for me to try to do these dives, knowing that I really don't have a whole lot of time out here. Appreciate all of you. I should say I appreciate all of you <laughs> for coming out here on this dive with me. Found Phil again. There's Phil. Oh, there goes my sea lion friend. What's up, dude? Are you going to say hi Phil? Okay. It's just such a, such a privilege to be able to go scuba diving. You have to be physically able to do so. This stuff is all very heavy. This is a pretty complicated world to go and explore. You have to be geographically able to go scuba diving, obviously, then you have to be economically able to go scuba diving, and my credit cards tell me that I should not be able to afford doing this, but it's my favorite thing in the whole world is to go scuba dive, go out here in this beautiful kelp forest that I'm surrounded by right now, see what's going on, and come back on land and share that with people who didn't get to go out that day or who won't ever go out, and that's Perfectly fine. I check my air. Make sure looking good. Oh! It looks like it's time to do our safety stop, everybody. To do my safety stop. This giant kelp here, it has a bunch of these white patches all over it. Those are bryothoans. Bryothoans are a carpet animal. Or a moth animal. You have all the animals that eat the kelp, from urchins to abalone, crabs. And then you have the millibi that live on the kelp. You have this incredible diversity, this community in the kelp forest. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that I guess I'm going to try to be a very specific organism in the local kelp forest to try to show you just what it's like on a Tuesday, what day is it? <laughs> on a Wednesday afternoon, as the sun is setting here, just going out with a couple of buds, go see what's out here in our local kelp forest, bringing our cameras with us, because that's what we decided to do. It's not, it's more special than what anyone else is up to. It's just another specific thing. And hopefully, in our adventures together, in this type of set up, we'll be able to help bring you closer to what it's like to be out here yourself. Maybe it'll inspire you to come out and scuba dive, and if so, can't wait to see you in the parking lot. And if it's not to come out here and scuba dive, it's at least to know that this exists out there, that it's something that you share the planet with, and that can be beautiful and inspiring, And but really, I'm just out here trying to share a little bit about what I get up to, what I enjoy about my time here on the planet, and it's spending it underwater in these water woods in this giant kelp forest. And hopefully this episode was a lot of fun to watch. And if it was, make sure to splash those bell jellies, like, and subscribe. All that nonsense that just makes it so that hopefully more people see this and I can keep doing it. And uh, with that, everybody, here we are, on the surface, with a long way to swim in.
All right, everybody. See you back on shore. I'd like to give a big thank you, if I'm still recording, to the kind folks over at Backscatter Underwater Photo and Video. Make sure to go buy your GoPro Hero 11 from them with the flip filters. I've got one right here. It's a good camera. Can highly endorse. So I want to give a huge shout out to Scuba Pro for sponsoring me with this kit to go scuba diving. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Scuba Pro is the regulator that I've been using my whole dive career. And then I want to shout out Light and Motion for giving me this big old hunk in light that helped film some of that video you saw a little bit earlier. As I'm currently hopelessly tangled in kelp. I'm like, I didn't really say too much. <laughs> yeah, kind of all over the place.